What's going on everybody, it's Charles. Today I'm gonna to show you how to mend and repair broken vehicle plastic. This all came about when I was taking the instrument cluster out of the Black R32 and found that one of the securing tabs was broken. And rather than leaving it or replacing the entire back plastic housing, I wanted to go ahead and repair it. So what I did was I used some masking tape and epoxy and essentially made a new securing tab. And since that worked so well, I wanted to share with you guys exactly how I did it. As our cars age, or if we drive a Mark IV R32, we're probably gonna have some broken interior plastic. Of course, there's an infinite number of ways you can repair these stuff. Everything from not doing anything, replacing the component, and in fact, sometimes you get to the point where it's just not worth making the repair at all. Now, with any type of repair like this, the better job we do preparing, the better the outcome is going to be. We're gonna need a couple of different things. We're of course going to be needing our two-part epoxy. And big thanks to DAP Products for partnering with us on this video. I prefer the clear epoxy for what we're gonna do today. It's self-contained in this syringe, and I think it's a little easier to work with. We're gonna need some towels, we're going to need some masking tape, we're gonna need some rubbing alcohol in order to clean our surface. I like using toothpicks here to actually apply the epoxy. Now, depending on how nice you want the final product to look, we're gonna use various grits of different sandpaper. The higher the grit, the nicer the finish will come out. If you are going for that extra nice look, I like to use a little bit of touch-up paint, and I actually found that parchment paper is something really good to have during this application, and I'll show you why while we're making the repair. Finally, if you have something where you want a little bit more structure, using paper clips or even washers will work really well. I'll show you exactly what I mean while we're making the repair. Now, a couple of key things before we get started. One, you're really gonna wanna wear gloves for this job. Getting that epoxy on your hands, not ideal. Two, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. I got the fans running, so we're good there. And number three, I like my work surface to be old cardboard. That way, if epoxy gets somewhere on our work surface, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's get started. You can see right here, this is what the break of my instrument cluster looked like. So this should have a screw hole in it similar to this one here, and that's what actually holds the instrument cluster in place. Before we mess with the epoxy at all, don't even open it yet, we wanna get our surface prepared to make our repair. We're going to take some sandpaper and scuff it up. This is 180 grit sandpaper, and wherever we're going to end up with epoxy, we need to scuff the surface. This will give the epoxy more space to adhere to our plastic, and it'll be less likely to peel off. Once you have that surface really well scuffed up, it's time to clean it. We're gonna take some rubbing alcohol and either a paper towel or some Q-tips and get as much dirt as we possibly can off of that plastic. If you're not sure whether it's clean enough or not, grab a clean Q-tip and rub the clean Q-tip where you've already cleaned. And if you pull back a bunch of dirt, you gotta keep cleaning. All right, we are really good right there. So our surface is nice and clean and it's well scuffed. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some masking tape and build out a new tab with masking tape. We'll go up underneath and around like that. And do that one more time. So we're basically just making a channel here that sort of mimics the size of our other tab. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can always come back and sand it down and trim it when we're done. Our final piece is going to be like building a little dam at the end so the epoxy just doesn't flow over and out of our taped area. We got our little channel made. We'll close off the dam here. If you wanna get it exact, right, and have it exactly like this one, go ahead and measure this out and see how far you actually need to go. I like to kinda of eyeball it and overshoot just a little bit. That way I have some room to trim out if need be. We can also take a pick and kinda of fine tune that shape a little bit. So here's what it looks like from the outside. There's our plastic where it broke. This whole area in here is going to be what we fill with epoxy. Now it's time to start working with our epoxy. Be gentle when you're opening it because I actually like to save the wrapper and the plastic. Both of those parts of the packaging actually make great pieces to mix our epoxy with. The way this works is there's two syringes of compound because this is a two-part epoxy. We're going to break the little sealing tab at the end, squeeze out our epoxy, and then mix it together. What's cool about this packaging is here in the top part, is a small black tab. If we pop that out, we will find that this piece is actually a cap that goes on the end. So when we're done, we'll pop the cap back on and reseal the epoxy. We'll go ahead and squeeze our epoxy out. We'll go ahead and put our cap on. Now from here, you gotta work kinda quick. We have our epoxy out. 
We need to carefully mix it together. You only have about five minutes or so from the time you first pour your epoxy until you really need to have that on your work surface. So we got our epoxy all mixed up. What we need to do is we need to fill this little channel that we made full of epoxy. So we'll take on our toothpick. Uh, something like a popsicle stick works really well for this too. And just go ahead, fill up that little channel that you made. Now, after you got your epoxy in the spot that you need your epoxy, you need to take your workpiece and get it set so that your tab is going to be even. In this case for us, it means that our instrument cluster pretty much needs to be level, which is basically how it's sitting right here on the table now. We need to let this dry for roughly four hours. That'll give it enough time to truly bond. Now, while this epoxy cures, we're gonna fix one more instrument cluster, and I'm gonna show you how to add a little bit more rigidity to the piece that you're epoxying. Enter the paper clip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this paper clip over to our other tab, the good tab, and we're just gonna kind of roughly measure it out. It doesn't have to be exact, but we wanna get an idea of how long that tab is in relation to the paper clip. So I went ahead and just put a small mark with a Sharpie. Next is the fun part and the part where I hope you be extra safe. So what we're gonna do with our paper clip is we're gonna turn our torch on and we're gonna get that paper clip nice and hot. Be careful and don't burn yourself. We just wanna get it hot enough that it'll melt the plastic. Then with our paper clip nice and hot, we are going to just slowly pierce our plastic with our paper clip. You wanna keep in mind, you don't wanna really go all the way in because you don't know what's behind that plastic. We can always trim the end of our paper clip if we need to after we put our epoxy in. You can also reform that paper clip to fit whatever you're trying to fix. In this case, I actually think it's gonna work really well if we bend that paper clip into a U, heat it up, and then slowly press it into our plastic. Once we have that paper clip in, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did on the first instrument cluster. All right, while our instrument clusters are curing, I wanted to take a crack at actually fixing that super floppity glove box. Now, two of our screw holes are actually fine, so we don't need to worry about those. What's cool is, on the top ones, I actually found most of the pieces that broke off so we can kind of place them back in place and reinforce and epoxy the entire thing. On the one on the bottom, we're not gonna be able to do that, so we'll have to do similar to our clusters and make a tab. Now, just like the other repair that we made to the instrument cluster, our process is pretty much going to be the same. We're going to scuff each section up really well with our sandpaper. Then we're gonna go back and clean it with rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna just do one of these at a time so that I don't end up having to clean it a second time. Okay, next comes the step where we're gonna have to mask off a little bit. Now, I don't really care about what the backside of the glove box looks like, but what I don't want is us to epoxy this hole up and that epoxy just drip all through into our glove box and then we have a big old nasty epoxy mark on our glove box. I'm gonna go ahead and clean area here one more time. Get our little pieces as clean as we can as well. We'll get our bit of epoxy ready. Now we're gonna be super careful. We only really wanna get a bit of epoxy on the lip here. And if you, if it's gonna overflow, we want it to overflow to the outside of our glove box. We want very small amount here. Next, I'm gonna take a small circle of parchment paper and go on the back side of this piece that we're repairing. I'm gonna hold that parchment paper up to try and prevent as much epoxy from leaking into our glove box as I possibly can. We might get a tiny bit through, but that's not that big of a deal. Then I'll take that epoxy mixture and coat this entire piece everywhere where we scuffed up with sandpaper. This should fill in any cracks that are there, hold our pieces that I set in place together, and reinforce the rest of it. Now for the next one that we have to repair, I was actually able to find the entire piece to make the repair, which is awesome. So our process is the same as the other ones. We scuff it with sandpaper, we clean it really well, and then we apply a little bit of epoxy around the opening where the piece that I found broke out. Next, we'll take that broken piece and set it into place, and of course, making sure that it's oriented right. Then we'll do, just like we did on the last one, we'll coat the entire backside of it with epoxy, making sure we got a good, nice, strong coat on the whole thing. Even though there's not a ton broken here, that whole layer of epoxy is going to reinforce the backside of our glove box mounting point. That way we don't just have a crack in the plastic like in the next little section. I am taking care here though, not to completely fill over the hole that our screw is gonna go through, that way we don't have to drill this one out. Okay, for our final top mounting point, you might be shocked, 
but the process is exactly the same. Using our sandpaper, we're gonna scuff up the entire place we're going to apply epoxy. Then, our rubbing alcohol to clean that spot. Now, I did find part of this mounting point, so we have a little bit of extra plastic to work with. We'll get a little base layer of epoxy down, set our broken plastic piece in, and then go ahead and fill in our gaps with epoxy. Now we have this big opening up at the top. I'm gonna try and set some epoxy over the top of this opening and let it fill in. We'll have to wait and see what it looks like once it's fully cured. While we let our initial run of epoxy cure on the glove box, let's see where we're at with our instrument clusters. We'll go ahead and peel the tape off of our tab that we made without the metal reinforcement. That looks like a pretty solid tab. However, it's kind of ridiculous and probably a little bit too big. So I'm gonna show you how to take care of that in just a second. Let's see how our other one turned out. Looks like we got a little tape left. I actually think this one turned out a bit better. Now what we're gonna to do to tune those tabs up and get them looking really, really nice is we're gonna grab a Dremel and we're just gonna sand them down and try and mimic the form of our other tab. Now you absolutely don't need to use a Dremel for something like this. You can use regular sandpaper. You can actually use something that works really well is a small nail file board, especially if it's a tight spot that you gotta get into. But I think for this case, we're gonna use the Dremel. Now you'll notice that I struggled a little bit pulling the tape off. If this is something you're worried about, what you can do is before the epoxy is fully cured, go ahead and peel your tape off. I didn't do that on this one because I was worried that if we removed all the tape, it would just let this tab sag down and it wouldn't hold its structure quite as well. Remember, our goal really was to mimic this tab right here so that we could mount our instrument cluster back in. We can take our caliper, we can measure the width. In this case, really does not matter about 17 and a half millimeters. You could probably also do this here, take a Sharpie and mark it. What we also wanna do is we wanna look at how long that tab is. For that, we can still use our calipers, measure the distance between the cluster and the edge of our tab here. So we'll come over to the one we made, go to the edge of the cluster and mark that off. So this is roughly where we're gonna cut our tab off to make it pretty much the same size as our other one. Next, we're gonna take our Dremel and clean up our epoxy tab that we made. This is gonna give us a rough shape for what we're looking for for our final product. It may not be a bad idea as well if you're working with electronics like this one to go ahead and tape everything off so you don't get this little dust everywhere inside of your component. Once you get the shape pretty much where you want it, you can spend a little bit more time really sanding it using an increasingly higher grit sandpaper to make that look super nice. Next, we're gonna loosely install the instrument cluster so we can put a mark on it where we need to drill a hole so our screw can go through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find an appropriate size drill bit and carefully drill out that screw hole. Once that's done, you can sand it a little bit more if you want do another test fit and make sure that everything lines up. Now, if you wanna go that extra step or you're repairing a piece that is going to be visible, it might be worth painting over the epoxy. This is just basic exterior automotive touch-up paint and it covers up that epoxy really, really well. Okay, now that our instrument cluster is all done and taken care of, let's jump back to our glove box. For the one here on the end, that's pretty close to being complete. We have some epoxy completing, filling in most of the gap. Although I do wanna build up a little bit more epoxy behind the first layer, just to make sure that it's nice and strong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small sheet of parchment paper. I'm gonna roll this up, fairly small, small enough that it's going to fit through this hole. I'm gonna then slide it up through that hole. I don't need a perfect seal, I just need it to prevent a ton of epoxy from going down that hole. Now what I can do is I can mix up another batch of epoxy, fill in this part that's not fully filled in, and then let it cure. Now we've let this cure for, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. That should be enough time for this to dry enough to hold its structure. It's still gonna be tacky if we touch it, like it'll leave a fingerprint if you had bare hands. Let's go ahead and get our parchment paper out of here, and then we'll let that cure the rest of the way. Now for our middle one here that's still got a pretty big hole in it, we're gonna do something a bit different than we did for the other ones. We're gonna take a small scrap of parchment paper and just kind of mark out where our hole is and where we're gonna fill it, trim that up. It doesn't have to be exact. Lay that over our opening. Now I couldn't get masking tape to stick to this. It would just peel right off. So we're gonna use clear tape and we're just gonna tape that on just like that, just to cover that up a little bit. That's gonna hold the epoxy in. 
Now we got our tape in, we're gonna rotate the glove box over and stand it up. I have it supported on a block of wood because I want this opening right here to be mostly level. It doesn't need to be exact, but we want it pretty close. That way when our epoxy settles, it sort of forms this nice level-ish surface. If we laid this glove box flat, all the epoxy would actually just run out the front. If we had it too far the other way, it would run down the back into our glove box. Next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mask off this opening so that when we're taking our epoxy in, we don't drag epoxy all over the outside where we don't want it. So we're gonna use clear tape. Next, we're gonna mix up our epoxy, but instead of mixing it and then right away putting it on, I'm actually gonna let it sit for two to three minutes. This is gonna allow the epoxy to start to cure and it's not gonna flow as fast into our hole. And as we fill it, we wanna be careful with how much we put in. Once it starts to hit the level of where our opening is for our screw hole, we'll probably stop there. I'm gonna fill the opening up with epoxy too because I think that'll give us a much stronger piece. If you wanted to roll up some of that parchment paper, you could do that and then you wouldn't have to drill the hole out. Now before that epoxy is fully cured, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that clear tape off the front side. Take a look, it looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna flip the glove box and pull the tape and the parchment paper off the back side. Then we'll go ahead and let that all cure up while we fix the final part. For our final repair on what is just a disaster of broken plastic on this glove box door, we're gonna be fixing one of the lower mounts. One of the cool things about fixing this kind of stuff is you get to be super creative on how you do it. Of course, we're still gonna follow the same rules for everything else that we've done. We're going to make sure that we scuff up and clean the area really well, that way the epoxy actually sticks to it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make a template. Take a small piece of cardboard and I'm gonna trace out the opening where that tab initially was. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that template out so that the template's just a touch bigger than we actually need it. If you need to trim it up, it's much easier to just trim a little bit than it is to put some back because at that point you're basically making a new template. Once I get my template made, I'm going to cut out a small piece of parchment paper and tape it to the template facing our glove box. Then I'll do as good of a job as I can taping that on to this spot. Tape doesn't really stick too terribly well to these textured pieces of our dash. So you're gonna have to just kind of do the best that you can. Once that's in and secured, you may need to hold it while you're putting the epoxy in. Go ahead and start applying the epoxy. This is also a place where if you wanted to add a little bit more reinforcement, to the hole where the screw's gonna go through, it's not a bad idea. Go ahead and put some epoxy in, then drop your washer in, and then cover over the top of it back with epoxy. We're gonna fill that in until we have a pretty good layer of epoxy. Then we're gonna let that dry for a while, and we really don't want the epoxy to fully cure. We wanna let it harden, but be a little soft. This way we can take our template off with very little risk of having anything sticking to our surface. Let's go ahead and get some of our other pieces dialed in. This is the one where we had to really do multiple layers and a lot of epoxy work. So not only are we gonna to have to sand that down really well, we're gonna also have to drill a hole for our screw to go through. Now you also wanna do an inspection on the inside to see if any leaked past. I got a little bit here. We can go ahead and clean that out, sand it out if we want. I think for this, I'm just gonna leave it. You could also grab a washer with your screw, paint that black, and then you'd never see that either. Now for our final one, it looks like we actually had some epoxy leak past our template there. Let's see if we can't clean that up. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the hole for our screw. Next, I'm gonna take a really sharp razor knife and just run that along the edge of where I don't want epoxy. See, we didn't do a really good job on the outside preparing our surface for epoxy because, well, I didn't really want epoxy there. This means if I slice it a little bit, this should come off kind of easy. You wanna be careful not to go too deep with your knife because you don't wanna start cutting up your plastic there. So we got a, a pretty good amount actually off of there. Now to clean up this little bit that maybe doesn't look the best, we're going to get a small bit on an end of a rotary tool and clean it up. You do need to be very careful here. You don't wanna slip with this rotary tool and put a hole through your glove box or any other part that we're trying to make look nicer, not worse. Now we can just work our way with increasingly higher grit sandpaper and sand it down and make it look nice and smooth. You really wanna go next level for the final couple of high grits of sandpaper. So 1500, 2000 grit you can actually wet sand it and get a really nice finish. Finally, we'll go ahead and use our touch-up paint and paint this little spot right here. After you paint it, if you find like the shine is just way too bright, 
because that's what I think we're going to have an issue here with, where it's going to be super glossy against a much less glossy bit of dash trim. You can always go back with that wet sanding method and knock some of that shine down. Well, that was a ridiculous amount of broken plastic that we fixed in this video, but it is gonna be nice driving around without my glove box flopping all over the place. All we got it left to do now is put our glove box back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. If you guys have questions or comments, drop them down below. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.